Last Sunday, last week, we talked about engineers in terms of how they operate, primarily in terms of how they operate as creators, those who conceive of and design, co-creators with God, image bearers of the God who made them as creators. If you missed that message, as always, you can go to the webpage and watch that online. Today, we're going to talk about how engineers work as the ongoing maintainers and keepers of all created things. How what they do and who they are acts in a way that preserves what has been created, what has been made. Last week, I got an email from Rob Bronson, who's an engineer here at New Hope, and he writes in one of several emails this, these words. When we say that Christians are called to be the hands and feet of God, the doers, does this mean that, like an engineer, God is creating policy, design memorandums, specifications, maintenance plans, and optimization improvement projects for His children, and that we just need to tap into this source? I think God wants us to plan and design our lives and to come up with optimization. But perhaps He's there like a good engineering department, already always ready to provide advice, always innovative, because none of us are the same, and there to provide us, and there to provide us plans. God sees both the big picture, high elevation of things like engineers do, and the detail, and we just have to ask for direction. I would say that God very much operates in His relationship with you and humanity in this way. Jesus Himself promised, but when He, the Spirit of truth, comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own. He will speak only what He hears, and He will tell you what is to come on this project that is our lives. This Spirit is the same Spirit who hovered over the face of the earth in the Genesis account of how all things came to be. So the Spirit of God, according to the Bible's depiction of that Spirit, has a dual role, both as creator and as ongoing guide, preserver, keeper. The Spirit works in a project engineering kind of way, making things, and in an operational engineering kind of way, keeping things going. The Holy Spirit, writes theologian Louis Burkhoff, defining a concept called common grace, the Holy Spirit retains for the present the deteriorating and devastating influence of sin in the lives of men. That's written a long time ago, but you can do the math on the men in the lives of men and society, enables men and enables men to maintain a certain order and decorum in their communal life, to do what is outwardly good and right in their relations to each other, and to develop the talents with which they were endowed at creation. God keeps the world going by restraining the deteriorating and devastating influence of sin the force that works to break down what is good and right and ought to keep going in this world, the force that breaks all things down, human souls like yours and mine, the designs that we come up with in terms of how we lay out our life or lay out on something we've designed and created, breaks down family systems, and breaks down even material reality. The world, physically, is not what it should be. All of creation, the Apostle Paul writes, groans for salvation. Listen to how Michael Anderson, another electrical engineer who managed, used to manage a power system um, and transmission lines and stuff like that, what he describes, what he, how he describes what he does. He wrote me this week, I make sure all the protection systems work properly. It is a continual process of maintaining a naturally decaying system. Left on its own without any attention, the system will fail. 
John Calvin once said, if God took his hand off the cosmos, everything would just fall apart. Michael then goes on to make the God connection himself. If we neglect our relationship with God by not studying his word, not praying, or connecting with him, the relationship decays. Like this engineer who's impassioned to keep things going, God has a heart to keep things going. This is his project. You are his design. And he wants nothing more than optimization on your part. So then, what does an engineer's, uh, an operational maintenance engineer in particular, what does an engineer's heart and mind, and what does the field of engineering in general teach us about how God's Spirit does its preserving work? After our uh, engineering research church sermon writing planning meeting of a couple weeks ago, Michael sent me this note. Last night we were talking about optimization and efficiency, and I was thinking about and quickly looked for the Bible passage that talks about pruning. Jesus said in John 15, He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, God does, while every branch that does bear fruit He prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Michael goes on to write, Engineering often requires optimization of a system. When a method or process is ineffective and not producing results, it's it's sometimes best to scrap the system altogether. This can be a painful process, much like God cutting sin and evil out of our lives. When a system is achieving moderate results, engineers trim waste to optimize the process or method, allowing the system to bear more fruit. So what given what we just read, what Jesus said to them and to us, says to us, God cares about optimization. And seemingly, according to that little teaching, production and efficiency do matter to Him. Right there in that verse. God is an efficient God. And He prunes our lives so that we can be more fruitful, so that you can be more fruitful. It might be a little tweak here, just a small pruning, a little extra thing that is not optimal for you, a close call, some wake-up call that comes to you this week, or it might be a huge ripping cut into the very nature and fiber of who you are. God allowing some devastating brokenness to come into you, into your family's life. And God doesn't prune or allow these prunings to happen to be callous or capricious or mean. But like any engineer, God knows what the design is capable of, who you were really meant to be, who we as a community wrapped around knowing and loving God are really meant to be and knows the upside value, the long-term benefit of that so well that the pruning, even though in the short term it feels like it's killing us, he'll do it because of his engineering heart for optimization. He designed you. He knows what you're meant for. He knows that every human being on the face of this planet is meant to know Him and enjoy Him, like the Catechism teaches, forever. And we would argue, in this community especially, all the time, at work, at an, in, in Canna's office if you work there, in the school where you're teaching, in the school where you're learning, in the place where you do business, making roads or He knows what we're meant for. 